Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy. Believe it or not, it's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called The Email Marketing Show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. I've been working with and tinkering around on social media software, including influencer marketing platforms, for the better part of 20 years. I started cutting my teeth on content management platforms, social media management systems, and then in the late 2000s and early 2010s, I became somewhat established as having a degree of expertise with social listening platforms. For some time now, I've been demoing, testing, and using influencer marketing software as well. Now, as you know, I use Tagger. They are the presenting sponsor of Winfluence. It's a soup-to-nuts influencer marketing solution. Very powerful, and you've heard a lot about it here. That said, I can count on one hand how many times I've been able to talk the CEO, president, or owner of any of those platforms into a really candid conversation about the software space, their software, and the industry in general. It's not for lack of trying, but SaaS product executives are often protected by PR firms and beholden to shareholders first, so podcasters and industry influencers, if you will, are not primarily important. Well, today, I'm getting closer to not being able to count those I've had deep conversations with on one hand. That's because Pete Kennedy, the president and co-founder of the aforementioned Tagger, and for my friends at the FTC, and disclosure's sake, yes, they are a sponsor of this program. But Pete is here today to just chat, and without handlers or PR monitors looking over everyone's shoulder. We dive into why there's no real good, reasonably priced influencer marketing tools out there for the mid-market, if you will whether or not these platforms are in an adversarial relationship with the social networks because of brand collaborations and payments of influencers, what should be on the roadmap for social influencer software, the trends in the industry, and a lot more. This was one of the more informative and insightful conversations I've had about the industry, not just the software. You're in for a treat from Pete today on Winfluence. And coincidentally, Pete Kennedy and I will be on stage together at the Influencer Marketing Show in New York City on April 27th. I have a discount code for you to get tickets to join us there, so get out a pen and paper or get that URL bar ready. The Influencer Marketing Show is being held in North America for the first time this year. It's a one-day event in New York City, just off Broadway at the New World Stages on West 50th. It will be Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, coming up in just a few short weeks. I will be chairing one of the stages as well as moderating the panel that Tagger is sponsoring, featuring Pete Kennedy, who you'll hear from today, and Jenny Heinrich, who leads influencer marketing strategy for Ketchum, one of those Omnicom companies. And she is brilliant, by the way. So you're going to want to see this panel discussion. Go see the full speaker and topic lineup and get your ticket at jason.online slash imsfalls. That's jason.online slash IMS falls. And when you check out, use the code falls, all caps, F-A-L-L-S, and get a 15% discount just for listening to Winfluence. That URL again, jason.online slash IMS falls. Before we get to the break, I want to share something our friends at Storyblock have to make you smarter. It's a new report called The State of Content Management, and it is a very useful survey of 515 businesses in the U.S. and Europe, companies just like yours, and how they are approaching content distribution through their digital channels in 2022. You think about it. You have to provide content for your website. Maybe you also have a mobile app. 
Then there's e-commerce platforms, voice-activated speakers. Managing content is more complex today than ever. Get insights and ideas on how companies like yours are tackling the content challenge with the State of Content Management Report from Storyblock. Just go to storyblock.com slash winfluence for your free report. That's storyblock without the C, S-T-O-R-Y-B-L-O-K dot com slash winfluence. By the way, Storyblock is a headless content management system. It's rated as the number one CMS for 2022 by G2. It is also a new partner of the Marketing Podcast Network. So go get that report. Storyblock.com slash Winfluence. Storyblock without the C dot com slash Winfluence. We've got the president and founder of one of the leading influencer marketing software solutions on the hook. We're going to see what we catch with Pete Kennedy today of Tagger. He's next on Winfluence. You're listening to this podcast advertisement, so you know they're effective, but knowing which podcasts align with your target audience is impossible, right? Not anymore. Pod Chaser Pro is the one-stop shop for all podcast data, like listener counts, demographic and geographic information, and contacts for thousands of the top podcasts across any topic or industry. Learn more at podchaserpro.com slash MPN today. That's podchaserpro.com slash MPN. Pete, good to have you on the show. Just to dig into some topics, we talk about the product a bit uh, here on in every episode, but I wanted to spend some time to talk to you about, about Pete. I'm really yeah. interested in your thoughts on the industry, where it's going, uh, how you got here and all that good stuff. So I guess the first place I would love to start is just to find out how you did get here. You're founder and president of one of, if not the most widely used and popular, uh, I guess, enterprise software solutions for influencer marketing. But how did Pete Kennedy find himself doing that? Yeah, I think it's like with everything in life, you know, you just kind of happen into things. Uh, you can't really have a purpose that this is what I'm going to do and you, you do it. Just kind of happens once in a while. Um, yeah, so it started, you know, seven years ago. Go, I, I was trying to disrupt the music industry. Honestly, I was trying to find new artists before anyone else. And there was some technology out there really driving at um, listen, likes and views. And my you know, thesis was that market has been gamified. Right. So I can buy likes, listens, all these things. But what you can't buy is the social influence of people all around the world. And so it really started on Twitter. We were just listening to what people said. And if everyone's talking about Jason, Jason's going to go somewhere. <laughs> and it worked really well. We found like Dua Lipa seven years ago. We found Billie Eilish when she was like 10, seven years ago. Went to the music industry and they're like, what do you idiots know about music? I was like, nothing, you know, but we know data. And we found people very early in their careers. And they said, not interested. Now, fast forward, those music companies are clients, not to find artists, but to find influencers. And then, um, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk and the Vayner Media team heard what we were doing, loved how we could really understand audiences, but they said, you need to build workflow around influencer marketing. And I go, what is that? Right? Because I had no idea. And they said, we have a team of 30 people running campaigns and we have no technology. So I left my family, moved to New York, lived in their office for a month. Um, and during that time, I, I was working with my dev team in Poland to build you know, their workflow in, into our platform. And went to Poland right after that. Within two weeks, came back and we were hired and they were our first client. And so, um, you know, the platform's changed dramatically since those days, but really it's all about how can you hire a lot of influencers at scale and really understand not only the influencer, but also the audience of those people. And, and that's what we did really well. So. so when I look out at the landscape of influencer marketing tools, I see three or four subsets of solutions. There's There are all-in-one solutions like Tagger. Uh, there are the ones you can, th- those are the ones where you can run campaigns, have content approvals, influencers a- authorize access to their, their metrics for reporting. Those are Mostly high dollar investments, so what I would call more than five or you know five hundred or a thousand dollars a month, let's say, and they're very focused on B two C retail direct consumer brands. Then there's a, another set that's smaller, cheaper solutions, but they typically only offer maybe a directory and some list building or CRM functionality. They could range from twenty dollars a month to a couple hundred dollars a month, but there's no really campaign management or anything like that. Um, and uh, and and they're really they really only use publicly scraped data, so there's no quality control on what influencers are in there, no additional contact information, all that stuff. Then there's a small subgroup of solutions of that one that focus solely on one network, like.
like we only do Instagram or we only do TikTok. I don't know how these software companies stay in business because that's such a myopic view of influencers, but you know, they're there. Um, and then I think a fourth one would be the managed service tools that you as a customer never access. So for example, when you hire Isaiah, at least beyond their directory offering, you're hiring a team to essentially give you whatever number of influencers you ask for. They're vetted, et cetera. You never see the software that you do it for you. Now, the reason I share that long-winded description of those buckets is I have a few questions for you. First, do you agree with that kind of very high-level breakdown of what's out there, or am I missing a subset? No, I think that's a subset, right? You have the all-in-ones, you have the very light tech, and then you have the managed service with a light tech component to it. So that's that's pretty much uh, the landscape out there. And there's a lot of them. Okay. I, I guess I would also say there's a completely different set of solutions Um, Although there's not very many of them for B2B brands like Analytica really stands out there. And that's fair for people to know because, um, you know, few, if any of the main players monitor LinkedIn, for example. So I'll get back to that in a minute. But my next question for you is this. If I'm a small business that spends, let's say, twenty five thousand dollars on marketing for the year and I know influencers are an effective way to spend some of that money. Why are my choices $25 $25 per month for mediocre software or two grand or more per month for enterprise solutions that I can't even think about affording. Why, why is there not enough middle ground in the business right now? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, I thought you were going to ask, why would I want the expensive product versus the, the less expensive product? That's an easy one, right? Because you get better results. You know? sure. So, um, you know, you can go car shopping and, you know, there's a really cheap car and a really nice car, and you can't compare them because you just get different things with them, and you get better results with a with a more expensive uh, product and, and platform. In our example, um, why there isn't much of a middle ground? Uh, I don't think the market or companies out there have really developed that middle ground because there's there's no use of you. You know, if if you want a very light tech platform, you can go get that. Your results aren't going to be that great, but you're just dipping your toes into influencer marketing to see if it works for you. Once you realize it does, then you need an all-in-one solution. There's really no middle ground because there's no market for that. Why would you want a half good influencer marketing platform at a reasonable price? You would want the best platform out there that does everything that you need. Because it's, it's not just about discovery and discovering influencers and campaign management workflow. Now it's about strategy. What is my best strategy? What have my competitors done in market? How can I conquest them? Um, you, you just need that all-in-one platform really to, to get the results that you need. Okay, that's fair. And I think and I'm probably a, a weird anomaly in the business because, you know, I live and breathe it every day. I obviously use Tagger, so I have the best tool out there. So <laughs> that's can. that's easy. But I also don't use Tagger to its full capabilities. Like I don't use, I prefer to gather my influencers, gather the contact information, and then reach out to them one-to-one. I don't necessarily, I like emailing them directly as opposed to using the internal communications platform. So I don't even use Tagger for all of the, that it could be used for. I have to test it all out and I love it. Um, but I just prefer if I'm going to you know reach out to an influencer, I prefer send them an email from my email address, call them, text them, DM them, whatever. And I just like to do that manually. It's just my, my preference. But I also know that I'm an outlier because I kind of do this all the time. And, and Jason, real quick, I mean, we have a lot of clients who do that too. And that's yeah. why our, our, our campaign management workflow is modular. So if you need to add shipping into that, you can add a shipping module into that. If you want to in, in, integrate your own email account into our platform so you can reach out to them through your own email account, you can do that. You know, some of our clients just love Outlook or they love Gmail and they just want to live in that realm and they don't want to do that. Totally fine. Right. And that's why our yeah. platform is modular so that you can incorporate your own workflow, but you can also incorporate ours and you can work cohesively, you know, on any campaign that you're doing. Yeah. You're not an outlier. You're very normal. <laughs> OK, well, that's that's good to know on, on one hand and bad to know on the other. I like to be different, <laughs> but whatever. Um, OK, now let's talk about the B2B thing, which I think will lead us into something that I know has to be frustrating for you and your product team. LinkedIn is one of those networks that seldom represented or accounted for within the influence marketing ecosystems, the bigger you know tools like Tagger and others. That's frustrating for B2B brands. But if I'm not mistaken, that's largely because LinkedIn just doesn't make a lot available through its API, right? What, what are some of those limitations and frustrations in providing all the feature sets people ask for, whether it's LinkedIn or other networks? Yeah, it, it's really frustrating for, for marketers that they, there is no API. So we, we talk to LinkedIn all the time and they always say, tell your clients to buy ads on LinkedIn. 
<laughs> and we say they are buying ads on LinkedIn. But if you take Instagram or TikTok or any of these other platforms as examples, they are spending, say, 50% of their budgets on creating content with influencers. And they're, they're adding another 50% for paid media. So I can't tell you how much money we've driven to these platforms by just having an influencer marketing campaign. It's basically a content gener generator that you're going to put paid media on. So I think personally, they're missing out on a huge opportunity, uh, but I don't control their APIs and I can't, I, I can't really uh, <laughs> control what they do. So I, I think it is a huge missed opportunity for LinkedIn. But again, they, they're very focused on just having all payments done through their platform through a paid media standpoint. Um, the other thing that we know is that you know, um, influence marketing campaigns just get a better ROI than paid media because it's word of mouth marketing and you're, you're getting advice from people that you know. So again, I think it's a huge missed opportunity, but you know, we can't scrape their data. We don't do that. So if they don't have an API, we're not able to ingest that data into our platform. True. All right. So we know Tagger at all do what they can do based on what the APIs offer. With influencer marketing becomes such a big part of the economy for these platforms these days, why aren't the platforms... Facebooks, TikToks, YouTubes, why aren't they coming together to offer a consistent set of tools? Like the, it, it seems like it's hit or miss on whether you're getting, you know, g uh, demographic data on one, you don't get it on another. Is it a territorial thing? Is it just that they're all different companies and doing their different thing? Are they not coming together and talking about how they can make this thing better? They are definitely not coming together and talking about how to make things better. It is a cat fight between all of them. So what they're doing on their side, they're not sharing that with the other platforms. They don't want the other platforms to know because there's so much competition amongst the social media platforms. And also, Jason, like, what's the next social media platform going to be in five years? We have absolutely no idea, right? No and so they are very protective about their strategies and what they're doing. Um, I really think that, you know, the platforms already, you can buy influencers on their platform, right? Um, but, you know, as you know, every campaign that you run is cross-platform. So you need a platform like Tagger where you can do campaigns on all these different platforms. Do I see a scenario in the future where we have access to their marketplaces? Definitely. I, I think Tagger might be there at some point in the future where we're just kind of that portal to all these different marketplaces when, when mm -hmm. these platforms build out their own um, marketplaces. TikTok's done a great job of it. Facebook's done a good job of it as well. So I see that coming. Is it there yet? No. But I think that that's where most of the API is going to be drawing to, from in the future. Okay. Uh, on a related note, then you walked right into my next topic I want to talk about. I want to ask you about those creator tools. You've got the brand collabs on Facebook. You've got the creator marketplace on TikTok. From a business standpoint, these make sense for the platforms because they get a cut of the brand partnership dollars. If I go through Tagger to engage an influencer and pay that influencer, Facebook, TikTok, et cetera, at this point, don't have a way to take a commission or a service fee off of that. Does that set you guys and your fellow influencer tools up to be in an advertising Serial position with the social networks at all? Uh, a, a little bit to a degree, although I will say that, you know, we're working with TikTok now to integrate into their marketplace so that cool. those payments will be going through TikTok marketplace. So I think the platforms will be driving towards that in the future. But I think that all the platforms and TikTok does a great job of this. They realize that every dollar spent on influencer marketing is driving paid media. So as we're integrating the marketplace, we're also integrating the paid media on TikTok. So it's really easy to boost posts. Um, I think they're doing a really good job. They're really being smart about this in terms of driving um, payments, but also just economy around TikTok. Some of the other platforms are a little slow to do that, but I think they're all going to be doing it in the near future. Nice. All right. I want to throw something out there for you to think about related to the brand collabs and creator marketplaces of the world that I'm hoping you can serve as a, a voice of reason in watching for this over the years, because I have experience from my cafe press days of dealing with platforms uh, basically setting users up to profit from their activity there, just like these creator marketplaces, only to systematically siphon money away from them over the years. So I'm not bullish on these at all. I'm worried that creators who are getting 80, 85% of the brand collab dollars now are going to get 70, 75 in a couple of years. Then they're going to get 60, 65 and so on. I saw it happen with designers on the custom products platforms like Zazzle and Cafe Press. The bottom line is Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, regardless, they're all beholden to investors. And when you have to show a profit, you have to take that money from somewhere if you're not generating enough, enough of it in the ad revenue space. Creators are an easy target for that because they're a disorganized, unconnected group of people. So I think these platforms are bad for creators in the long run. Do you see that as, as a potential problem? And how can companies like Tagger help look out for the creators out there? 
Yeah, it's a huge problem. I mean, you look at some of these affiliate networks out there where, you know, creators are getting less affiliate dollars from these platforms. So what, what that does, though, it drives these creators to other platforms, right? These creators own a lot of power within this space. And so if one network or one platform is not paying them, guess what? They're moving their audiences to another place. I mean, think about what Web3 is going to do. Who mm. knows, right? I mean, now I can take that economy just entirely to myself. I own these users and these followers. I know who they are. They can pay me on micro seconds, right? Um, based off the content I create. So who knows what that's going to look like in the future? Tagger is going to be part of that, but who knows what that's going to look like? Certainly, though, there is a tipping point where the creators are like, why am I paying this, this platform X percentage when I don't need to do that? I can go to a platform like Tagger. I can go to another platform where I'm going to take all of that. The platforms know that, and they know that there's a price elasticity here that they need to work within. Um, but they also know that every dollar spent on influencer marketing is driving paid media. And so that's where they're making the bulk of their money, um, you know, where their margins are the largest. And I think that they know that, and, and that's kind of where, where the market's going to be going for them. All right, let's bring it home to the product a little bit. I know that's obviously more of your day-to-day -day focus. I've thrown out the opinion that creators are going to need to protect themselves from the platforms, either taking their money or owning their audiences by swinging back to the old school mechanisms of community building. So blogs, email newsletters, maybe even subscription-based content platforms like Substack or Fanbase, certainly the metaverse and uh, you know, cryptocurrency and micropayments and whatnot plays into that, as you mentioned. I think the challenge there for brands is the influencer marketing platforms don't have a way to show me currently how big someone's email list is or how much traffic comes in from their blog. Are those features solvable? And more importantly, are they on the roadmap for tools like Tagger? They are. So we can get blog data through Google Analytics if the influencer authenticates in and we can see that. Um, email list, yes, we can we can pre present that to our clients and, and they can know that. Um, you know, I, I will say that the, the blog data is less important for our clients today than it was 10 years ago. 10 years ago, all that mattered were blogs. Now it's like, that's really not as important because eyes are on social media. They're not as much on blogs. Now that might change and it depends on the industry and the category of the influencer. Um, but, but I would say that, you know, overall, we are going to be getting more first party data from the influencers as they start to give that information to us. A lot of that's also being driven from the brands themselves or the agencies that use our platform. They're constantly uploading information about influencers that they know. And then for their instance of the platform, they can search that data as well, right? Um, so that, that's, that's a really key point. I mean, I think that when we look at the data that's being integrated into our platform today and where it's going to be in the next two or three years, we're going to see a lot more first-party data coming into our platform from our clients, right? And from the influencers, less from the platforms. Well, I think that the the influencers that I've encountered using Tagger, uh, but but when I reach out to them directly and say, hey, can I get a rate card or can I understand a little bit more about your demographics of your audience or whatnot? The information that the smart ones supply me is, well, I've got this many followers on this many networks and I do these brand collabs and here's some metrics that I've done that can prove I can drive success. But the really smart ones say, oh, and by the way, I've got 35,000 email addresses and I send them, you know, weekly email newsletters and your product can be a part of that, too. If that suddenly starts to surface in Tagger, now all of a sudden I've got like an arsenal of, of better influencers that I can recommend to my clients. I love it. Yeah. And that's literally how our, built, our platform's built, right? Because you're doing these communications all the time with clients. You give us that idea. And then that's something that we can add as a field when influencers come into our platform and they can add that in there. So um, yeah, definitely. I think that that's a, a great um, additional way to reach out to audiences that, that want to interact with your brand. So related to that, what do you think Tagger has to do? I think you've mentioned a few things here today that will probably be in this answer, but what do you think Tagger has to do over the next three to five years to continue to be a leader in the category? Yeah, so there's definitely things within our platform that we're doing right now. There's also trends that are happening that we can help our clients understand, right? So let's first talk about trends that are happening in this space. Um, now, these trends are happening in different segments of the space, which is interesting. Like you look at Gen Zs right now. Gen Zs, it's so fascinating. Gen Zs have created almost this parasocial relationship with influencers, right? Where they're almost like friends. So that line between is this an influencer I follow or is this a friend has been completely blurred. And if you look at content from influencers that are attracted to Gen Zers five years ago, it was very produced, very beautiful. Now, when you see that content, it's very raw. They're rejecting, you know, social comparisons, 
and, and they're, they're really looking for social connections, right? And so we are teaching our clients about that, right? So we're looking at these trends, understanding them, and how do you integrate that into our platform? How do you allow people to find more real influencers? The other trends that we're seeing today, too, um, are brands are not just partnering with influencers to promote their brands. They're partnering with influencers and non-for-profits for things like mental health. So you see Lululemon partnering with NAMI, which is the National Alliance of Mental Illness, um, for World Mental Health Day, right? They are partnering with an influencer there too, but it's more about not just here's my brand, let's promote it. It's more about how can we help social health, right? Mental health, which is affecting everyone in today's w- world, especially coming out of the pandemic. So it's trends like that, that, that we're trying to help our clients understand so they can create better campaigns, they get better engagement. That campaign for Lululemon is one of their best engaged content they've ever created, which is really interesting. I bet um, it is. And then how, how do we help our, our platform? It's really about how can we help our clients? So we're doing much more integrations with more e-commerce platforms. So we're integrating Shopify right now and other e-commerce brands really to make campaign management workflow much easier. Yes, it's all about using discount codes so you can track conversion. The biggest use case, that, case there is I want to create my Shopify um, store and let influencers pick and choose the products that they want, they'll automatically be fulfilled to them. So fulfillment is massive and it's a major pain point. (laughs) We kind of stayed away from from a long time because it was mostly SMB brands using Shopify, but now with Shopify 5 Plus, everyone's doing it. Um, We're integrating paid media into our platform. So yes, you can visualize that today, but we're actually integrating it so you can boost and buy ads on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok now. Um, to make uh, make it much easier. So you don't need to go to multiple platforms in order to boost content. Um, we're doubling down on proprietary tools within our a platform, like our affinity data. Um, our affinity data allows you to understand an uh, influencer's audience. Who are they? What are they into? You know, do, do they shop at Walmart or do they shop at Target? Mm-hmm. Um, do they shop organic or do they shop mainstream? Uh, we're doubling down on that and spending a lot of our dev time, um, you know, on proprietary tools. Um, and then lastly, Payment is such a pain for all of our clients, right? Um, and so now you can go in and you, you can pay influencers through our platform, through PayPal, but we're actually offering, and we don't do managed service, but we are offering now managed service payments. We're actually paying influencers on your behalf because um, we, we're out there and we're talking to our clients and like our biggest pain point is payments. And so now we're going to take that off their hands and we're going to do that for you on, on a manual basis. So, um, and then visual recognition, there's a ton, ton of other things, but um you know, it's for us, it's all about looking at trends that are happening in the space and how do we make influencer marketing easier for our clients? I guess we should uh, probably tell people that you and I will be on stage together at the uh, Influencer Marketing Show in New York City on April 27th, along with Jenny Heinrich from Ketchum to talk about what data points move the needle for brands. Any uh, sneak peek at which are your favorite to talk about? Um, you know, no, I'm not going to tell you anything because we're going to talk <laughs> I think we're talking for like two hours or something. So we need to hang, <laughs> hold on to this. That's true. Um, no, but you know, listen, it's conversion metrics. It's, it's engagement metrics. Um, it just depends on who that, that client is. What are they into? But we have about an hour's worth of content there. The question is, uh, Jason, what are you wearing? I, I hear we're wearing costumes on stage. Are you wearing hey, you, you, you're in charge. You tell me what to wear. Okay. I, 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 I have to be on stage all day. So it needs to be somewhat <laughs> comfortable. But uh, but I will be happy to don a Donald Duck suit or whatever you want me to wear. That, that's where we're going. So you yeah. just you just we're tell gonna, me what to do. We're gonna be cartoon there. characters. It needs to be triple X. Needs to be big, I'm a big <laughs> boy. So done. I'm on tent it. size. Here we go. So for those of you, by the way, who uh, uh, who need to know, uh, we'll make sure the links are there for you in the sh- show notes. But if you listeners are out there, want to join us at IMS, the Influencer Marketing Show, April 27th, New York City at the New World Stages just off Broadway on 50th. The link for the ticket is jason.online slash IMS Falls, short for Influencer Marketing Show Falls, IMS Falls. We'll make sure that's in the show notes at jasonfalls.com after as well. Pete, thank you so much for the conversation Uh, It's not every day the president on one of the platforms will just roll up his sleeves and dig in on this type of discourse. So I appreciate you sharing that. And thanks for supporting Winfluence. I I couldn't be happier with the platform's performance and the the partnership we have. So thanks for your time today. Well, you're doing a great job and I'm I'm here anytime you want me. So Awesome. I'll see you in New York. All right, man. Looking forward to it. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter, 
or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPN you might enjoy as well. I'm Jonathan Gaby, host of Marketing Distilled. Each episode, I distill what I have learned and observed in the marketing space and talk with industry leaders like me to help you in your work. Subscribe to Marketing Distilled today. It'll make your marketing that much smarter. Just search for Marketing Distilled wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.